Okay, this lesson is going to be about radicals. And we're going to just remind you or review how to simplify radicals. And I'm going to do that with several examples. So the first one I'm going to have is the square root of 16. And most of you would just jump to the conclusion and say 4. But sometimes you need to know um, that it could also be negative 4. So technically this is 4 and negative 4. And why is that? Um, that is because um, 4 times 4 is 16, but also negative 4 times negative 4 gives you a positive 16. And so that square root can be the positive or the negative. A lot of times we're used just a positive um, for what we're doing, but sometimes we need both, especially for solving equations that we're looking for zeros on a graph or something like that. That would be a time when we would need both of them. Um, if this were a negative, if we had the square root of negative 16, that is when an i comes into play. Um, again, it's 4 and negative 4, so positive, negative 4, that gets both of them. But because it's the square root of a negative, you get an i with that because the square root of negative 1 is how you get an i. And so those come up occasionally. Our next example, we'll do a cube root. Now, cube roots are a little different because you're not going to have two answers. Cube roots are either going to be a positive answer or a negative answer, but not both. Um, so the cube root of 64, you're thinking what times itself three times will give you 64, and that answer is 4. And again, that's just, um, just positive 4. You don't have i's with cube roots, and you just have positive or negative. So let's do another cube root, but of a negative number. So the cube root of negative 8, what times itself three times would give you a negative 8? That would be a negative 2. And again, you're thinking negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative times a negative is a positive, but times another negative is a negative. And so the cube root of a negative is a negative, not an i. Okay. Now, sometimes you're going to have variables in these roots that you're trying to break down. So if I had, say, the square root of 4x squared y squared, you just do the square root of 4 like normal, and this will be a case where we just deal with the positive version. So the square root of 4, I'm just going to go with positive 2. Um, but then the square root of x squared and the square root of y squared, um, we divide those by 2. In fact, let me make this problem just slightly bit different. Just to have something else to um, look at. Okay, so I changed that y power to a fourth just so I could talk about this. Um, you divide those powers by 2 because it's a square root. So if it was a cube root, you would be dividing by 3. Um, but since it's a square root, you divide them by 2 because a square root is also known as a one-half power, so it's the same as dividing by 2. So x squared, divide the power by 2, you get 1. y to the fourth, divide the power by 2, you get 2. So this is going to become 2xy squared. Alright, now let's do a cube root. So I'm going to do the cube root of negative 27c to the sixth. So again, I treat the number just like I was treating the numbers up here. Since it's a cube root and a negative, I'm going to have a negative answer. And then the question is, what times itself three times would give me the 27? And that would be the 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 will give me negative 27. Since it's a cube root, I divide my power of my exponents by 3. So c to the 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2. That gives me a c squared. Now, sometimes when you are working with um, radicals, your directions may say give an exact answer, and that means they don't want decimals. So if you have square roots, you have to know how to break those down. So let's go with something like the square root of 48. This is not a perfect square like 4 or 16 or 36 is, um, so you have to break that down. And the way you do that is by saying, okay, that's got to be two things multiplied together to give us 48. And both of those would be in square roots still. 
and I decide what is the biggest perfect square that will go into 48. So yes, 4 will, but that's not the biggest one. You want the biggest one. And so in this case, 16 is the biggest perfect square. And you always want to put that in the first parenthesis, I mean in the first square root. 16 times 3 is 48. So 48 was under a square root, so the 16 and the 3 are under square roots. And then you can actually take the square root of the 16 and get 4. When you say you're going from 16 to 4, that square root goes away because that's like the operator, that square root, you got the answer, you're done with it. So the 4 is not under square root anymore. The 3 is because you couldn't do anything with it. So the square root of 48 becomes 4 square roots of 3. And this would be considered an exact answer. Um, and again, put that perfect square in the first one. So let's do another one. The square root of 400. Okay, put your two parentheses, I mean your two square roots and decide what you can multiply. Um, and in this case, we weren't thinking totally like we should because 400 is a perfect square. And what is the square root of 400? It is 20. Okay, pardon my technical difficulties there. All right, um, another example. Sometimes you have a number outside already. And so this is really similar to the answer the way it looked on number 7, except this 98 can be broken down. Um, you just happen to have a 2 out front. So what you do with that 2 is just kind of bring it along. You still do your 2 square roots for the 98 and decide what's the biggest perfect square that will go into 98. So think, you know, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on. And it happens to be that 49 is the biggest perfect square. So I'm going to put it first. 49 times 2 is 98. So then I can actually again break down that square root of 49 because the square root of 49 is 7. I have the 2 that's out front and what you do is multiply those. The square root of 2 didn't break down so you're going to stick that on the end and go ahead and multiply your 2 and 7 get 14. So 14 square roots of 2 would be the simplest answer we could get there. Alright number 10 let's do a cube root. They work the same way, except um, with perfect cubes instead of perfect squares. And so you might need to make a list, um, like 2 cubed is 8, and 3 cubed is 27, and 4 cubed is 64, um, 5 cubed is 125. It might be easy to make a list um, for this purpose so that you can easily pick the biggest one that will divide into 108. Um, that might help you out. So if you think about the two numbers that multiply to get 108, and one of them is a perfect cube, it would be 27. So 27 times 4 is 108. Those are both still under the cube roots. And then I can take the cube root of 27 because I know that's 3. So that goes out front. The 4 is still under a cube root because it cannot be broken down. Okay. Occasionally, you're going to run across a problem that has fractions. So I have the square root of 125 over the square root of 5 as my first example. I would always suggest deciding if the numbers that are under the square roots will reduce before you start trying to rationalize. So just look at it as, as if this was 125 over 5. Does that reduce? In this case, it does. 5 goes into 125 25 times. Now, these are under square roots, so the 25, once you simplify, has to be under a square root. And then you can take that square root. The square root of 25 is 5. Okay, so then let's move on to one that doesn't. So for number 12, I'm going to do the square root of 2 over the square root of 10. Now it does sort of reduce a little bit because 2 and 10 reduce to 1 -fifth. Again, since these are both in square roots, um, I put my reduction in square roots. 
And just as a side note, I can't reduce something outside of a square root with something inside of a square root. That's not allowed. But we are allowed to do this since they're both in square roots. Now, if you come over here, you think about it, you know the square root of 1. That's 1. So really, this is 1 over the square root of 5. But as you've probably learned in previous math classes, you can't um, work with this because it has a square root on the bottom. So you rationalize it. And the way you rationalize is by multiplying by that square root of 5 over square root of 5. So on top, 1 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 5. On the bottom, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25. The top doesn't reduce, but the bottom, the square root of 25, is 5. Okay, let's do a few more fractions. Um, 13 is another case. This time we don't have a square root on the top, just on the bottom. And so that's a case where we have to rationalize. Again, the problem is with the square root of 7 on the bottom, so that's what I'm going to multiply by. And multiply by that on the top and on the bottom. And then I just do uh, the top straight across. 1 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 7. The bottom straight across. The square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49. And then you reduce that. The square root of 49 is 7. So you have the square root of 7 over 7. Okay. Next example, you may want to pause and try this one on your own. Okay, we have 2 over the square root of 3, so I need to rationalize. Multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. If I go straight across the top, I get 2 square roots of 3. Straight across the bottom, I get the square root of 9. And again, that becomes a 3, so I have 2 square roots of 3 over 3. All right, 15, I'm going to uh, give us something that looks a little bit different. 1 over 2 plus the square root of 5. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated looking um, because of the plus. And this could be a plus or a minus. When you rationalize with these, I can't just multiply by the square root of 5 because it won't help. It won't get rid of square roots on the bottom. You have to multiply by what's called the conjugate of the bottom. Conjugate. And that means that it is whatever you have on the bottom with a different sign. So 2 minus the square root of 5 instead of 2 plus the square root of 5. And that's what you're going to do on the top and the bottom. And when you have something like this that you're multiplying, you are probably going to want to put it in parentheses so that you remember to double distribute or FOIL, however you think of that, um, to get the four pieces. Since I just have a 1 on top, it's not that big of a deal on top, but if I had um, something with a plus or minus on top, I would also want to do that there, and I'll do one of those as my next example. So here, 1 times anything is that, so the top is pretty easy here. Then the bottom, uh, again, FOIL, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times the negative square root of 5. Positive square root of 5 times 2. And then the last part is the square root of 5 times the negative square root of 5, so negative square root of 25. And again, I can keep the top, but I'm going to do some simplifying on the bottom. The middle two should always cancel out if you've done it correctly. I have negative 2 square roots of 5 and a positive 2 square roots of 5, so those cancel. But you have um, 4 and then minus, and the square root of 25 is 5, so that would be a negative 1. And you're probably not going to see this because we don't normally walk around with 1s on the bottom of fractions and work with it that way. So what would happen in this case is that the negative 1 would come to the top and get distributed in. Um, so that you would have negative 2 plus the square root of 5 as your answer. Okay, here's our last um, example of what you need to be able to do with radicals. And um, this time with the fraction, I do have a plus or a minus on top. Again, this is a minus, but pluses and minus both fall into the same category. I still, the problem is that I have a root on the bottom, and that's where I still figure out my conjugate from. So my conjugate is going to be 3 plus the square root of 2. 
and I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around everything so that I remember to FOIL correctly. So let me do the top first. I have 1 times the square root, or excuse me, 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times the square root of 2. Negative square root of 2 times 3. And then negative square root of 2 times the positive square root of 2. Be negative square root of 4. On the bottom, uh, multiply 3 times 3 and get 9. 3 times the square root of 2. Negative square root of 2 times 3. And negative square root of 2 times positive square root of 2. Then I have a lot of simplifying to do. On top, this time, I'm going to kind of make some shortcuts here. I'm going to go ahead and say that the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to think of it that way. And I have 3 minus 2 because I take that sign, so I get 1. I also have the square root of 2 minus 3 square roots of 2, and that's like saying 1 square root of 2 minus 3 square roots of 2, so that'd be a negative 2 square roots of 2. On the bottom, again, the two middle terms should cancel out if I've done it correctly, but I'm going to go ahead and, instead of having to write a whole other line, think of the square root of 4 as a 2, so that I have 9 minus 2, which is 7, and this would probably be left like this um, instead of like we had to work up here because it was a 1. So this will be an acceptable answer. And that concludes this lesson.